recently I was just introduced to the term universal design. So um, I'm going to read off the definition here because I think it's kind of important for those that aren't familiar with it. I might be the only one, but I thought this was a good definition. So it says universal design is the design and composition of an environment so that it can be accessed, understood, and used to the greatest extent of, of by our extent possible by all people, regardless of their age, size, ability, or disability. An environment or any building product or service in that environment should be designed to meet the needs of all people who wish to use it. This is not a special requirement for the benefit of only a minority of the population. It is a fundamental condition of good design. If an environment is accessible, usable, convenient, and a pleasure to use, everyone benefits. By considering the diverse needs and abilities of all throughout the design process, universal design creates products, services, and environments that meet people's needs. Simply put, universal design is good design. So I was actually introduced to this um, this phrase through a show that I saw, our uh, 60 Minutes uh, segment they did, on Sunday night. So I did several posts about it, uh, kind of different angles about it, but so I won't go into the whole thing, but essentially a architect um, had a brain tumor. They did surgery. He lost his vision, uh, but continued being an architect. And what he ended up doing was uh, designing buildings for people who had vision impairments um, because he was now an expert in that field. So um, they were showing part of the story was they were showing he's working on this big uh, transit facility in San Francisco, I believe. And so one of the things they showed he did was uh, there was, you know, it's a big, long facility uh, and there's platforms, you know, every so many feet or whatever. Well, what he did was design it to where the concrete is smooth uh, until you need to turn to go to one of the platforms and then the concrete has texture to it. So when uh, somebody who's using a cane can is, is you know, uh, kind of scraping it across the ground, they can hear that difference and know that this is a place to turn. So what's interesting about that is it still looked really great. And I think you could even pick up some of those cues visually, even if it's subconsciously to know, like, these are all the places where I could turn, you know? So that's kind of an example of something being universally good. Um, Heather sent me a video and in the video, the lady who was blind talked about um, automatic doors, you know, so you're carrying a bunch of groceries out of the grocery store and you can't grab the door. Well, they have the automatic doors that open. That's good for everyone. And it's great for people uh, who might be in a wheelchair. So a lot of these examples talk about like uh, the physical world, but I think they're easily translatable into digital spaces as well. So an example that I thought of was, uh, you know, adding alt tags to your images. So for somebody using a screen recorder, um, that's going to explain what that image is to them. But it's universally good because that's also going to explain to Google what your image is. So now you're going to have better SEO benefits from the alt tags. Uh, the same thing could go for subtitles to videos. So somebody that is deaf could watch the video and still understand everything that's, that's being talked about. But also you have a ton of people who watch videos on silent anyways, or you can take that text and turn it into a blog post and get SEO benefit out of that. So it's something that can be um, universally uh, good for you.